Hey, it's Walter here. Welcome aboard. Naked Forex, best selling book. Naked Trader here. We're going to talk about naked trading. And what I want to do is share with you something kind of interesting, or at least it's interesting to me. Now, I got a question from a trader here. And uh, this trader was asking, Hey, Walter, you know, you're showing us this stuff in Forex Tester, but how do you know it's going to work in the future? Now, number one, that's a very good question. Uh, it's a great question, by the way. Number two is we never know, right? <laughs> we just don't know. We don't know what's gonna happen in the future. It's either gonna work or it's not gonna work. Now here's what I've noticed and here's what I'm willing to share with you. By the way, we're just doing some testing in here. I'm gonna close out these positions. Um, number one is if, if you wanna, if, you, if you're trading a strategy and you're worried about it not working in the future. There's a couple of different things you can do. Number one is you can develop your strategy in uh, in one with one set of data. So, for example, I'm in the Euro USD four hour chart here, and this is all the way back in 2007. So I can develop my strategy in 2007, and I can say, okay, well, it seems like it's working. Let's see here. What what I mean? What have we got here? It started at 10 grand, it's at $21,251. So it's working pretty good. Uh, we've more than doubled the account. And it seems seems like it's a pretty good idea, you know, to use this strategy. But here's the thing. How do I know it's gonna work in the future? So what you can do is you can take the in-sample data, which is basically the data that I'm using right now to develop the strategy, say from 2002 to 2007. And then once I get all my stats and I figure out what's going on, now what I can do is I can go ahead and go, all right, that's great. It worked for those five years. What happens if I actually take these, this system that I developed and then trade it on a different set of data? So then I can go, all right, now I've developed that from 2002 to 2007. Now let me test it from 2015 to 2018, for example. That's one way to do it and see if there's any difference. Now here's what I've noticed and here's what I wanna share with you. If you are doing a lot of testing with your strategies, one thing you'll probably notice is that the more complex your rules get, the more likely it is to break down. Now this kind of makes sense, right? Like if I, I used to trade a system where like, and I know this sounds totally crazy, it sounds crazy to me, but every new moon, I would assume that the Euro USD was making a swing point. It's crazy, I know, but that's kind of what I had come up with looking at all these different things. I was looking at GAN strategies and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, well, I'll be darned, but it looks like, you know, every new moon we get a swing point. And so I was using that as the turning point. I would kind of uh, anticipate the market moving there. Now, the way to test that, instead of just going back and looking at the last three years or five years, like I said, you develop your strategy on one set of data and then you test it on another. That's called forward testing or walkthrough testing. Now, the next thing you can do is you can actually forward test it with a demo account. You can get demo accounts that don't expire, and this is a really good idea for that. But the most important thing you can do besides developing your strategy on one set of data and then testing on another set of data, the other thing you can do that's going to work is to reduce your rules. And this is absolutely critical. Here's why. The more complex your strategy is, the more likely it is to break down. So this strategy, this trend following strategy, it makes a lot of sense if the market's trending. Now it looks like the markets could be downtrending. Now, now it looks like the market's not really going anywhere. So um, let's say I wanted to use a, I wanted to create a breakout strategy. So what I might go is, okay, well, every time the market makes, has two touches on the top of a box and two touches on the bottom of the box, I'll define that box and then I'll wait for the market to break out of that box. Okay, so now let's see, uh, I think we might actually have another box here. This probably is gonna look a whole lot better in a lower, in another, uh, in another time frame, like a slightly lower time frame, like a two hour or one hour chart. But let's just stay here in the four hour. Okay, so we're out of the box. So I could just trade this strategy where I buy right here. If, it, if the market goes above that breakout candle and my stop loss is in the middle of the box right here and I just go long like this if this is if this is what happens. And then I just I just ratchet up my stop loss underneath the recent swing high. Okay, so that was a very small winner. 
So, and so if I develop this strategy and it seems to work, the question is, is it going to work in the future? Here's the answer. The more moving parts I have, the more likely it is to fail. So if I have a moving average, a stochastic, a MACD, um, rules about the time of the day that I can take the trade and all that sort of stuff, it's probably more likely to break down because the more degrees of freedom, basically what happens is I am, I am over optimizing for the, the past data. If I have a very simple strategy, like here's another one I'll give you. Look at this here, this is a trend line. Market's following this trend line. If it breaks below the trend line, I sell. That's an extremely simple strategy and it's much more likely to work over the long haul. Okay, so there it is. It's broken below that trend. Even if I draw the trend line like this, which I don't know why I would, but let's just, I know, I know everyone had, and their brother has a different trend line, you know, rules and stuff, but I'll put my sell stop there, put my buy, my stop, whoops, my sell, my sell stop below this candle. And I say, look, it's broken out of that trend line. It could be actually making a box here and I could be wrong, but let's just say that I, I do it like this. Now, if the market trades lower, boom, I'm in the trade. And it actually did and then stopped me out. Now it's in the box, so I can use my box strategy. And I go, okay, is it gonna break out of the box? If it breaks out of the box here, I can go long. So I've got two different systems here. Both of them are extremely simple and the likelihood of them working in the future is high simply because I don't have the opportunity to over optimize. I'm only gonna be able to over optimize if I add a whole bunch of rules. I used to trade a strategy by the way, where I had 15 different rules, I had a spreadsheet and if these 15 things lined up, I could take a trade and it was on the three minute charts and it was crazy and it drove me crazy because by the time all 15 things would set up, then I, you know, I'd, I'd miss the trade and stuff like that. So um, here we are. So now we're in. So now what I can do is I can move my stop loss. So I'm going to not take a full loss, put it below the swing low here. If it comes back and stops me out, I will not lose the full thing. Now I can move up to break even here. See if we go long, if we keep going higher, if I'm going to get stopped out, stopped out. Okay. So I'm stopped out at break even. That one didn't work out, but you can see, you know, this is what I want to give you some ideas for very simple strategies because the simpler your strategies, the fewer rules, the fewer indicators, the better off you are. So that's why things like trailing your exit below the candle with the lowest low of the last three candles. That's why that works. I talk about this in Naked Forex. I say, hey, if you take a system, if you take a trade and you want to use a trailing exit, the three bar exit's a great way to do it. So here's, here's one right here. Let's say that we, we end up going long here. But uh, whoops, yep. Hold on, I'm put my buy stop right here above this high, okay? And I just wanna get into a trade because I wanna show you the trailing exit. By the way, if this stuff, if you like this stuff, you should join the small account big profits course. Okay, I didn't put a stop loss on one, that, that was a really bad idea. Small accounts big profits, you can click the link above or below this video to get more information about that. All right. Now I think what's happening here is I've got a trend line. So I can go, okay, what if the market actually follows, fall, falls below this trend line? And another thing I would use here is the open position ratios. I've shown you this before in other videos. If the markets, if all these traders are, are piled in on one side, I definitely want to be on the other side, like really definitely want to be on the other side. Those are the most opportune opportunities. <laughs> Aha, we're in. And is it gonna fall? Yes. Okay, now I'm gonna cut my risk in half, basically. Okay, pretty good. This is a pretty good, this is pretty good market structure. It should fall below these lows here, hopefully. Ah, now that's a tricky one. Nah. Okay, let's see what happens. I'm gonna get stopped out here. Yeah, okay. So I lost about 0 0.6, 0 0.5 R on that trade. Um, that big wiki candle there was the clue and then the bullish candle be beyond it. Let's see if I can get into a trade here. I want to share it with you guys, the trailing exit. Okay, let's do this one. Let's put a buy stop above this, this candle here. I'll put my stop loss down below it. And this is going to be a trend continuation if it triggers. Great, good. Now, the way that the, the three bar exit works is that it's below the lowest low, which in case this is this candle here of the last three candles. Now, when we get another can, okay, so I got stopped out. But the way this works is you can keep following, if you're in a trend, it'll keep following the trend. And it's a pretty tight uh, trailing exit. 
And so what that means is if the market consolidates for a while and, and, and makes a box, you'll get stopped out. But if it keeps going, you'll be all right. I think there are other exits that are that are better if you want to have an average winner that's bigger. But if you're worried about losing and you and you move to break even quickly, then the three bar exit can work for you. So you just put it below the low, the lowest low of the last three candles for a bullish trend and for a bearish trend, you put it above the high of the last three candles. And it's in it's in naked forks, but it's pretty simple and it's a great way to trail your exits. So if you want to learn more about this sort of trading, you can join us in small accounts, big profits. The, click the link below or above this video and we'll have that there. Otherwise, we'll catch you in another video. See you later. Have a good day. Happy trading.